This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. And welcome to worship here at Trying Mercy Center. We are delighted you're here, whether in person or joining us online. We welcome you this morning. And a way that we share the peace of Christ with one another is on the front of our bulletins, we have a saying, you are God's child and you are welcome in this place. So I would love for us to greet one another um, in the name of Christ with this saying to one another. So let us stand and greet our neighbors. You are God's child and you are welcome in this place. God's child, my friend, and you're welcome in this place. place. I want to draw your attention to the announcements in the bulletin and also the calendar in the bulletin. Um, Let me start with this. Today is Palm Sunday, but it's also Passion Sunday. And what that means is we celebrate both Jesus coming into Jerusalem on the donkey when everybody waved the palm branches and they said, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And so we're going to wave palm branches, a few of us, in a little while. And we're going to celebrate Palm Sunday, but then we're going to shift mid-service. And we're going to move into Passion Sunday, which is not always easy. We start turn and face Holy Week, where Jesus goes to the cross. And because we won't be gathering again together during Holy Week, um, Jeff will be preaching uh, a, a scripture from the cross. And so the art today is small but it is profound. So I invite you to come up and see it after the service, but it is Jesus in the middle hanging on the cross and the criminal to his left and the criminal to his right. And I do not know who painted this, but thank you, whomever you are, um, for letting us share this um, in the worship service this morning. Also not in your bulletin is on Good Friday at noon. Um, I participated a few weeks ago in in recording my part of the seven last words of Christ. There will be seven pastors who will be preaching short homilies on the seven last words beginning at noon on Good Friday, and that will be from a link on Mattoon Presbyterian Church's Facebook page, but we will also have the link on our Facebook page. So at noon on Friday, please plan to join or you can watch it later but the service will be at noon on Friday next Sunday first of all let's get to Saturday we have choir practice for anyone who would like to join us at 3 o'clock here on Saturday we have choir practice and we will be singing at the 11 o'clock service And if you would like to come it's not too late so come and make a joyful noise with us Sunday we will be having two services for Easter one at 9 and one at 11, and I anticipate the 11 one to be full, so if you have a free schedule, please come at 9, but also you're welcome to come at 11. You can do two, but uh, we're trying to have two to keep 
room for everybody anticipating their, their coming on Easter Sunday. I almost say drum roll, please, but I do not want to jinx us that um, next Sunday we will begin serving hot meals again. And uh, beginning with Easter, not only will Christ be resurrected, but the whole the meal will be resurrected, and we are excited. So for lunch, we will have a hot lunch uh, for folks to be invited. Valley Brook is coming, and they're infamous for their uh, Easter meal. And then uh, we'll have bag lunches for the Sunday dinner, and that will be from now on. Um, in two weeks, we'll start serving a hot breakfast on Monday, uh, because this next Monday after Easter, uh, we are closed. So the following Monday is when we will start serving hot breakfast. Then we will have hot lunch on Saturdays, hot lunch on Sundays, and a meal to take home for Sunday evening. Thanks be to God for all the people who provide that. A reminder to please turn your cell phones off during the service. Let us now turn our hearts and our minds and our souls over to the worship of our living God.
going to invite Donovan Moses up for the call to worship this morning. Good morning, y'all. Cry out, people of faith. Rejoice and praise God. Cry out, people of faith, for your Savior, Savior draws near to Jerusalem. Blessed is Jesus Christ, who did not turn back for fear of the cross. Let us praise the God who loves us, sharing Christ's sufferings and facing with courage our path of faith. To mortal pain, 
Then take, O oh Christ, your power and reign. Right on, right on, right on to die. Then take, O oh Christ, your power and reign. Right on, right on, right on, right on to die. Then take, O oh Christ, your power and reign. And take, O oh Christ, your power and reign. Friends, let us confess before God our sins, the God whose steadfast love endures forever. Let us pray together, not in unison, but responsively. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, how well you know our hearts. Still, you loved us to the end. We have denied you. We have betrayed you, pour out your spirit of grace upon us, just to love and serve you faithfully, and to love and serve one another by example, in your holy name we pray, amen. Look, the Lord will help you, for God's Faithful love lasts forever. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. If you'll join us again um, in the African American hymnal uh, 242, Lift High the Cross.
Have any of you ever talked with someone who it seems that they begin or end every sentence with something like, well, I'm sorry, but, or forgive me, but sitting on the side of a highway waiting to catch speeding drivers, a highway patrolman over in Berea, he saw a car puttering along at 25 miles an hour. He thinks to himself, well, that driver is as dangerous as a speeder. So he turns on his lights and he pulls over the driver. Approaching the car, he notices that there are five women in the car. The driver and another woman are in the front seat and then three women in the back. Eyes wide and white as ghost. The driver, obviously confused, says to the patrolman, forgive me, sir. Forgive me, sir, I was doing exactly the speed limit. What seems to be the problem? Ma'am, the officer replies, you weren't speeding, but driving slower than the speed limit can be just as dangerous uh, to the drivers as driving too fast. Forgive me, officer. Forgive me, slower than the speed limit, she asks. No, sir, I was doing the speed limit exactly, 25 miles per hour, just like the sign says, she said a bit proudly. The patrolman trying to contain a chuckle, explains to her, no, ma'am, 25 is the highway number, not, not, the, not the speed limit. Well, a bit embarrassed, the woman grinned and said she was sorry, thanked the patrolman for pointing out her error. But before I let you go, ma'am, I have to ask, is everyone in the car okay? These women they seem awfully shaken, and they haven't muttered a single peep since I've been here talking with you. The, the driver replied, forgive me, sir. No, oh yes, they'll be all right in a minute. We just got off of 183. <laughs> Today we conclude our summer series on lament and forgiveness. Our sermon this morning is about forgiveness. And the sermon text is taken from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 23, verses 32 to 38. Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me, please? Clear our minds, O oh God. clear our minds from thinking about what happened before we got here or what we're doing after this afternoon or this week. Clear our minds and help us to focus and open our hearts for your message to us this morning. Amen. As Pastor Jennifer said earlier, today we observe both Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday. Passion Sunday is when we remember the story, which I just read, 
of the suffering and the crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth. Pastor Jennifer shared these powerful quotes from Richard Rohr with me this week. The cross was Jesus' voluntary acceptance of undeserved suffering as an act of total solidarity with the pain of the world. He hung in the crucified middle and paid the price for all such reconciliation with reality in its wounded state. And then he invited us to do the same. The people watch, the leaders scoff, and the soldiers mock. But that's not what I want to talk about this morning. Instead, my sole focus this morning is going to be on Jesus' prayer in verse 34. When Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them. Or they don't know what they're doing. Who's the them Jesus wants God to forgive? Who's the they who don't know what they're doing? Jesus is on the cross. He's facing death. He's dealing with incredible and treacherous pain. But he's not concerned about himself. No. He's concerned about the ones who are killing him. The ones who don't even know what they're doing. But who's the them? Who's the they? Is it the soldiers? Perhaps it's the Roman soldiers who routinely put people to death. He's referring to them, perhaps, here. Are they the they, they are they the them and the they that Jesus mentions in the prayer? Or is it Pilate? Perhaps it's Pilate, as you may recall, against the rule of law, he still gives the order for the crucifixion. He's found Jesus not guilty of the charges, yet the pressure of the Jewish leaders and his fear of a riot forced him, he thought, to go against his better judgment. So he signs the death warrant, and then he washes his hands of the whole sorry, sordid affair. Or is it the chief priests and the scribes? They are, after all, the prime force behind the crucifixion. They are determined to kill him, to kill Jesus. They paid off Judas for his betrayal, sent soldiers to arrest Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. They brought his case before Pilate and stirred up the crowd to demand that Jesus be, be crucified. Perhaps it's the chief priest and the scribes that Jesus is asking God to forgive? Or was it the Pharisees and the Sadducees? The Sadducees discredited him, discredited him, and the Pharisees are the first to actively plot Jesus' death. Perhaps it's the Pharisees, the Sadducees, who Jesus is asking God to forgive. Ancient Commentators are pretty much in all in one accord to universally apply Jesus' prayer not to the Romans but to, to the Jews and the early Christians. That's who they were certain that Jesus was praying for. The ones that were responsible, they said, for Jesus' death. Father, forgive them. For they don't even know what they're so many choices, whom does Jesus really mean? Jesus here models for us how to respond when we're wrong and scorned and betrayed and offended. He shows us how to do it with a simple prayer. Father, forgive me. 
or they don't know what they're doing. Dr. Harry Blake has been the pastor of the Mount Cannon Church in Shreveport, Louisiana for more than 50 years. And I admit when I heard that, I thought to myself, that church sure must be a lot easier to pastor than some of the churches that I've pastored over the years. And talking about his ministry at Mount Cannon over all those years, Dr. Blake talks about it. And he talks about in 1963, that awful bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. On Sunday, September the 15th, 1963, when those four little African-American girls were killed during Sunday school. That bombing injured around 22 other people. Four members of the local Ku Klux Klan chapter had planted 19 sticks of dynamite attached to a timing device beneath the steps of the church located on the east side of the church. It was one of the worst moments in our country's history. Martin Luther King Jr. described it at the time as one of the most vicious and tragic crimes ever perpetrated against humanity. And it was. Dr. Blake said that after that bombing that he said, I asked the chief of police of Shreveport, Shreveport, as many pastors in Shreveport had done, I asked if we could have a six block peaceful march to remember those four little girls. But he didn't answer me back for a week. And then Dr. Blake said Sunday came and the police commissioner and nine Shreveport, Louisiana policemen came and they dragged me out of the church and they beat me and they left me for dead in the churchyard. Forty years later, the city council formally apologized to Dr. Blake for what those men had done to him. The reason I'm telling you that story is this. When the police commissioner was dying, when he was on his deathbed, you want to know who he begged to come and to pray with him? One name, one face. Please send Dr. Harry Blake to pray with me, the police commissioner said. And Dr. Blake went and he prayed with that man who had dragged him out of the church and left him for dead. How can anyone do that? How can anyone do that, to go and pray with that man like Dr. Blake did? That man that had beat him and left him for dead. There's only one way. And it's when you've centered your life around Jesus' prayer. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they're doing. God forgive them. And I'm going to forgive them too. And when you can say that, when you can pray that, it can transform the worst thing that life can ever tr throw at you. Father, forgive them. Or they don't know what they're doing. Let me turn to my earlier question. Who's the them? Who's the they? In Jesus' prayer. 
Is it the Romans? Is it the Jews? Or is it someone else? Barbara Brown Taylor, best-selling author, teacher, an Episcopal priest, she points out that if this sacrifice is truly God's will, then why do the Romans or the Jews need forgiving at all? They're simply playing their assigned parts so that God's will might be done. So if the Romans and the Jews don't need forgiving and that they were just simply playing their assigned part so that God's will might be done, well then who's left? Who's left? Who's the them and the they in Jesus' prayer? It has to be us, doesn't it? It has to be us. We're the ones. We're the only ones who are left. I think that he's praying for you and praying for me. On the cross when he says, Father, Father, forgive Jeff. For he doesn't know what he's doing. I think he's asking God to forgive us all for the times that we've crucified him or stood by and let someone else do it, by what we've done or left undone, when we've crucified him with each and every one of our sins. Each time we sin, we crucify him. And unlike those who actually put Jesus to death, we actually know who Jesus is. We proclaim him as our Lord and Savior. They didn't do that. Yet we continue to sin. I continue to sin. And when I do, when, when we do, we crucify him again. And how does he respond? How does Jesus respond when we sin, when we crucify him? He asks God to forgive us. And not only that, Jesus being Jesus, well, he even gives us the benefit of the doubt, doesn't he? He gives us the benefit of the doubt and says and tells, tells God that we don't even know what we're doing. And as Taylor points out, Jesus even gives us a prayer to pray if we ever should find our own hands hammered down and someone has done bad to us, wronged us. He gave us a prayer. Father, forgive them. But they don't even know what they're doing. Jesus asked God to forgive us. And with this prayer, he shows us how to respond when someone else needs forgiveness. In Lorraine Hansberry's play, Raising of the Sun, an African-American family inherits $10,000 from the father's life insurance policy. The mother of the household sees this legacy as a chance to escape the ghetto life of Harlem and to move into a little house with the flower boxes in the countryside. The brilliant daughter of the family sees the money as a chance to live out her dream and go to medical school. But the older brother has a plea that's difficult for the mother to ignore. 
He begs for the money so that he and his friend can go into business together. He tells the family that with the money he can finally make something of himself and make things good for the rest of them too. He promises that if he can just have the money, he can give back to the family all of the blessings and all the hard, for the hard lives that they've denied. He can make all that right. So against the mother's better judgment, she gives into the pleas of her son. She has to admit that life's chances have never been good to her son, and he deserves the chance that this money might give him. So she gives him the money, all $10,000 of it. And the so-called friend, he skips town with the money. The desolate son has to return home and break the news to the family that their hopes for a future have been stolen. Their dreams for a better life are, are now gone. The sister lashes out at him with a barrage of ug ugly epithets. She calls him every despicable name imaginable. Her contempt for her brother has no limits. When she takes a breath in the midst of her tirade, the mother interrupts her and says, I thought I taught you to love your brother. For Natha, the daughter answers, love him, there's nothing left to love. But the mother responds, there's always something left to love. And if you ain't learned that, you ain't learned nothing. Have you cried for that baby boy today? I don't mean for yourself and the family because we lost all the money. I mean for him, for what he's been through and what it's done to him. Have you prayed for your brother? Child, when do you think is the time to love somebody the most? When they've done good and made things easy for everybody? Well, then you ain't through learning. Because that ain't the time at all. It's when he's at his lowest and can't believe in himself cause the world done whip himself. When he starts to measure somebody, measure him right, child. Measure him right. Make sure you done take into account what hills and valleys he done come through because before he got to wherever he is. That's forgiveness. Isn't it? That's a beautiful forgiveness. That's love that's given when it's not deserved. It's forgiveness when it's not earned. It's a gift that flows like a refreshing stream to quench the fires of angry, condemning words. And how much more loving and forgiving is God's love for us? talking to someone today. You came into this room in a hot mess. You're burdened down and loaded up, crushed under and oppressed by whatever the world has thrown at you. Here's the take-home message for you and everyone else in this room. Here's what I want you to get from this sermon. Jesus loves you. Jesus will always be with you. Jesus accepts you. 
and forgives you and renews you. And as another pastor put it, washes behind our years. Because of Jesus Christ, we have healing and forgiveness for our past, help for our present, and we have hope for our futures. And Jesus Christ calls you and me to forgive just as we have been forgiven. He calls us to make the prayer that he prayed on the cross our life's prayer, our daily prayer. Father, forgive them. But they don't know what they're doing. This is the gospel. This is the good news. And it's true. Thanks be to God. Amen. this is God's house and this is God's world and all that we have and all that we are comes from God and belongs to God may we share the gifts generously and to the glory of God so that people may see Christ's love and presence in the world Jesus was an only son as he walked a Calvary hill. His mother Mary walking beside him in the path where his blood spilled. Well, Jesus was an only son in the hills of Nazareth. As he lay reading the Psalms of David at his mother's feet. Mother, pray, sleep tight, my child, sleep well. I'll be at your side. No shadow of darkness, no tolling bell shall pierce your dreams this night. In the garden at Gethsemane, prayed for the life he never lived. He beseeched his heavenly Father to move the cup of death from his lips. And there's a loss that can never be replaced, a destination that can never be reached. A light you'll never find in another's face, a sea whose distance cannot be breached. Well, Jesus kissed his mother's hands, whispered, Mother, still your tears. For remember the soul of the universe, will the world and it appear. For remember the soul of the universe, will the world and it appear.
God, you have given us your only child, Jesus Christ, as the way of our salvation. With these gifts, we give our thanks to you. Bless these gifts, O oh Lord, with the same generous, humble spirit that you have, so that all who receive these gifts may also receive your love and your forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On a hill far away, stood an old rugged cross. May we all take a deep breath, calm our being, and allow the Spirit to join us in our silent prayers. Heavenly Father, with prayers of praise we come together to celebrate this Palm Sunday and to reflect upon the suffering and sacrifice of the Passion. Last year, Lord, we worshiped online and outside as we endeavored to minimize the ravages of COVID-19. We continue to mourn and grieve for those who lost so much during the pandemic jobs, homes, sobriety, mental health, and loved ones. Help us, dear God, embrace the hope of new life, of better times yet to come as we are together in this sacred space, contemplating the courage, the tenacity, and the love of Jesus as he entered Jerusalem to the calls of the people, Hosanna, God saves, palms lining the street, the small donkey upon which he rides, and the brooding Pharisees looking on in fear that Jesus was winning over the people, changing the world. Jesus knew he was fulfilling the scriptures, that he would be murdered, that he would be resurrected. Lord, accompany us into the threat of resurrection. As Julia Esquivel wrote in the poem, they have threatened us with resurrection. Accompany us then on this vigil, and you will know what it is to dream. You will then know how marvelous it is to live threatened with resurrection to dream awake, to keep watch asleep, to live while dying, and to already know oneself resurrected. How is it possible, O oh God? How is it that we can live with the death of our loved ones, the deaths of so many to COVID, and the deaths of so many to senseless, brutal war? How is it that we can face our own death, leaving the life we know? How can we embrace the threat of resurrection? Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus, for his life, his death, shows us how. Jesus entered Jerusalem after a life of listening to the lamentations of others, bringing crowds together in celebration, teaching in the temple, eating with and caring for the poor. The hearts of others who witnessed this dedication were filled with jealousy and fear. 
we understand, O oh God, that it is by your grace that Jesus forgave those who turned away from him, who turned him in, who threatened him with resurrection. For Jesus knew and trusted that despite the suffering ahead, life is on the other side. We are thankful, God, that our universe embraces never-ending life. Cycles of atoms changing forms, but never being lost. We pray, O oh God, that we allow ourselves to be threatened by resurrection and turn from a life of fear to embracing that of life in relationship with you and the called community. A community that not only lifts up those who struggle, but also lifts up those who've gone before us. Cry out, people of faith, for your Savior draws near to Jerusalem. Hosanna, God saves. Blessed is the one who comes in God's name. Amen. And so now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God give you the grace never to sell yourself short but grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember this world is much too large for anything but truth, and much too small for anything but love. And so now may God take your hands and work through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your mind and think through it. And may God take your heart. May God take your heart and set it on fire for Christ's sake, and for each other's sake as well. Go, brothers. Go, brothers and sisters, in love and in peace. Amen. On a hill far away stood an old Oh.